From the outside, Linux might seem challenging or daunting, but I promise you, it's really not. In this video, I want to answer three simple things. Why people use Linux, what Linux even is, and how you can get started with Linux in an easy and chill way. You won't become a Linux expert by the end of this video, and neither am I, but you will feel comfortable enough to get started, and that's really all you need. After covering the why, what, and how, I'll show you where to get help, what I'd wish I'd known when I started, a small fuss starter pack, and a simple roadmap for learning Linux at a relaxed, comfortable pace. I hope you enjoy. So why do people use Linux? Here are some reasons. 1. Privacy and control. Many people are tired of feeling watched. On Linux, you don't have to sign into a Microsoft account or Apple account. There's no built-in advertising and you decide what runs in the background. It feels like your own computer again, not something you're borrowing. 2. Giving all the hardware a second life. Linux can make all the laptops and desktops feel surprisingly fast. Machines that struggle on Windows or can't even run newer macOSs can still be totally usable with the right distro. That saves money and keeps good hardware out of the bin. 3. It's actually fun to use. Linux is different, and that's part of the appeal. You can change how it looks, how it behaves, and which apps you use. You learn small things over time, and that's genuinely rewarding. And the best part, you don't have to fully switch at once. You can try Linux in a VM, on a spare laptop, or from a USB or external SSD before fully committing. I highly recommend this approach. Okay, what even is Linux then? Linux isn't the whole operating system, it's the kernel, the engine that handles hardware, memory, storage, and all the low-level stuff you don't see. What you actually use day-to-day -day is called a distro, short for a Linux distribution. It's the desktop, installer, app store, update system, and everything that makes Linux feel like a complete operating system. Here are some examples of popular distros. Linux Mint, which is familiar and very beginner-friendly. Ubuntu, that has huge community support. Fedora, it feels modern and it's very up-to-date. There's no one best distro. There's no distro that's best for beginners. It's all about finding a distro that suits you. There's also the terminal. It's powerful, but you don't need to live in it. Most distros come with a full GUI, just like Mac OS or Windows. There you can install apps, change settings, and customize everything without touching the command line unless you want to. Finally, there are desktop environments, which control the look and feel of a distro. So that includes animations, panels, icons, and menus. Some popular options here are GNOME, it's clean and minimal, KDE Plasma, which is extremely customizable. Then there's Cinnamon, which feels familiar to Mac and Windows users. Then there's XFCE, which is lightweight and known for being good on older systems. So when you hear Linux, it's not one thing. It's a set of building blocks, the kernel, the distro and the desktop environment. So the first step of installing Linux is to decide on a distro. There's no right beginner distro. Anyone who insists otherwise is entirely missing the point. You should pick a distro that fits your hardware and one that you actually like the look and feel of, because you'll potentially be staring at it every day. If it feels dull or confusing, you won't enjoy using it, even if it's considered beginner friendly. Your hardware also matters. Some distros run better on older devices, and some work best with newer hardware that benefits from the latest kernels or driver support. A quick search for your laptop or desktop model can save you a lot of frustration. And yes, you can customize almost everything later, but it's much easier to start with something that already feels right and is comfortable to you. If you want a simple recommendation, Linux Mint is one of the easiest choices. It's stable, familiar, highly customizable, and, very importantly, you don't have to use the terminal if you prefer not to. The software manager, update manager, and driver manager, and settings are all in a graphical and a beginner-friendly environment. So how to install Linux Mint Cinnamon? 
There are many ways to try out Linux, like using a virtual machine or a spare computer, but in this guide we'll focus on installing Mint onto a USB stick and then a drive. This gives you the full experience without touching your main system, and the installation process is similar across most distros. So first we need to download the Linux Mint Cinnamon ISO from the official website. Then we use Belena Etcher or Rufus, which is basically just software that lets you write this ISO image onto a USB. When it's ready, restart your computer and boot from the USB. On most PCs you have to press F12 or F10 or Escape, and on Macs you hold the Option key. A note here, you may need to disable secure boot in your BIOS, as some systems won't boot Linux installers unless it's off. When Mint loads, you'll land in the live environment. Here, basically everything is running from the USB. You can test things out, but when you're ready, click Install Linux Mint. Then the installer will walk you through language, keyboard and disk selection. And if you're installing onto an external SSD, Make sure to choose that drive. It will be listed separately from your internal storage. And then just simply follow the steps, let Mint install, and finally reboot. After installation, you'll land in the Mint welcome menu, which gives you quick access to documentation, layout options, and settings. The first thing you should do is to open the Update Manager and install all updates. Mint may also offer to install additional drivers. This might be the case for older Macs that are missing a Wi-Fi driver, for example. Once that's done, you can start exploring Mint and installing some apps. So how do you install apps on Mint? You simply just open the software manager in the menu. This is Mint's App Store. You can search for whatever you want and browse different categories. You just click on an app, you can read the description and then press install and Mint will handle everything. No commands needed here. Many apps also come in flat pack versions, which are sandboxed and often more up to date. And Mint supports both traditional packages and flat packs out of the box. Here's a quick starter pack if you're unsure as to what to install. For browsers, I recommend Firefox, Zen or Brave. For email clients, I recommend Thunderbird or Mailspring. For an office suite, LibreOffice, which is probably already installed on your distro, but my personal favorite is OnlyOffice. It's very close to the Microsoft Office suite. For creative work, I recommend GIMP, Krita or Kaden Live for video editing. For audio and recording, I recommend OBS Studio or GPU Screen Recorder, and for audio, Audacity. As for general tools, I recommend VLC, Flameshot, Timeshift and Flatseal. These apps are more than enough to get a nice start, I think. Okay, this is important. Where to get help? When you're stuck, here's a simple hierarchy to follow. If one step doesn't give you what you need, just move on to the next. 1. Official documentation. So Mint's website and help pages cover most basics and are usually the most accurate. 2. Forums and wikis. Most problems have been solved before, and a quick search often gives you the fix. 3. YouTube. YouTube is great if you prefer a step-by-step -step visual explanation. 4. Discord and reddits. Real-time help on Discord and active subreddits like r slash linux questions, or in this case r slash linux mint, are really helpful. 5. AI. AI can help explain error messages or give you a starting point, but it should always be the last step. It's not perfect and it can be wrong, and using it sparingly is better for the environment. What I wish I'd known when I started on Linux. Linux has its own way of doing things. If you expect it to behave exactly like Windows or Mac OS, you'll end up frustrated. Once you accept that it's simply different, everything gets easier. Don't try to fix everything at once. If something doesn't work immediately, take a break. Learning slowly is much more fun than trying to master everything on day one. I also wish I'd known sooner how good the open source alternatives actually are. You can do almost everything you need with Fuss apps without missing much from your old setup. 
And most importantly, Linux is meant to be fun. Customize your systems, try new apps, experiment with themes or even other distros, but at your own pace. Finally, I want to give you a simple roadmap for learning Linux. Week 1. Explore and get comfortable. Browse the software manager, try different layouts in the welcome menu and just get a feel for Mint or your distro of choice. Again, if possible, I think you should run Linux on a separate drive or a spare computer, not your primary Mac OS or Windows system. Weeks 2-3. to three. Learn a few basics. Just some simple commands like ls, cd folder, cd and so on. An important one here is sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade, which updates your system. If you decide on this approach, doing one by one, adding a command here and there, you'll naturally get used to them. After month one, try to use Linux for a few daily tasks. Start browsing, emailing, writing, editing or watching videos on Linux. You'll quickly discover what feels natural. Okay, and here's the long term. Explore when you feel ready. Maybe try a new distro or desktop environment. But, of course, go at your own pace. That's the whole point. Okay, that's really everything I have for this video. Thanks to all of you who made it to the end. And thanks for supporting and watching the channel. I do read all comments and try to reply to most of them. If you want to get in touch with me or chat with other members of our small growing community, consider joining the Fokai Discord. The vibe is really cozy in there. And a huge thanks to Zeus and Clarkson and all of the other channel members. Seriously, thank you. You too can become a member, if it's financially responsible for you. Members get access to a VIP channel in the Discord. Okay, bye.